What is going on world? Welcome back to Aqua Malik. Today is going to be a very important topic. This topic is going to be covering why our Placo fish die an untimely death. Why is it so hard to keep these animals alive and why is it that so many of us have difficulty keeping these animals alive long term and animal that lives 20 to 40 years, sometimes maybe even longer uh, in, in natural conditions, why do we, do we end up keep killing them in weeks if not days from us getting them into our aquariums and uh, in this video we're going to be trying to cover some of the basic things that are important in keeping Placos alive long term and uh, so watch till the end and if you like this type of content subscribe, hit that notification and give this video a thumbs up so I know you like this type of content and comment below and let me know if I missed any points or if you want to clarify anything else or if you want me to make follow up videos on this or other videos that are similar to this and uh, let's get into this video and watch till the end everyone Produced by Malik. What is going on world? Welcome back to Aqua Malik. Today's video is about what are some of the reasons why our Placo fish die. Now the first thing I'm going to say is a lot of these animals can live a very, very, very long life. So chances are if an animal, like a Placo type of animal died in your care, it died before its time. But I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm here to help you so that you do not have to suffer through this anymore and none of your animals have to suffer through these types of situations. I have also gone through these types of situations where I have bought animals and they have died and, uh, and a lot of those animals that I have had in the past that have died in that way died before their time. So instead of feeling bad and guilty, let's find out why these animals died before their time and also why what we can do to prevent these untimely deaths in our playful fish tanks and moving forward, how we can have success keeping these very beautiful, very majestic and sought after animals in our aquarium. So the first thing I'm gonna say is, before you buy a Placo fish, you have to remember, these are animals for the most part that are highly specialized. So two things are necessary for success. One is a well-established, mature aquarium. Once you have that, you are eliminating the problem of ammonia spikes, nitrite spikes, and uh, other harmful issues. Usually pH crashes will be not an issue for most people once their tanks are established and well cycled and they are doing regular maintenance and uh, if you do want to learn more about pH crashes and stuff like that I do have separate videos about it if you guys also want to learn about ammonia spikes and nitrite spikes and how to avoid those you can also ask me and I can make a separate video about that as well uh, I'll put the link to the pH video up here but for the purpose of this video you need to have a well balanced well cycled mature established aquarium for the most part because a lot of these animals require pristine conditions. They will not tolerate even a 0.5 uh, ppm of nitrite or 1 to 2 ppm of ammonia is detrimental to a lot of these fancy types of plecos. So the first thing you want to have is an established aquarium and uh, well balanced and cycled and stuff like that. And then secondarily, you want to also do a lot of research to find out exactly what type of animal that you can keep comfortably in your specific setup. A uh, big thing is your space requirements. Um, you can find out how big the animal is going to get and then think, okay, the length of the tank needs to be at least 10 to 12 times of the length of the animal and the width of the tank should also be relatively at least 8 to 10 times of the length of the animal. Uh, so this is what you need to think about because the animal lives on the ground floor. You need to have uh, adequate ground space for this animal to live and, and be comfortable. Now if you are going to keep more than one, you need to also think about adding more levels onto this ground floor and lots of hides and caves and structures so the, the multiple animals that you are going to keep are going to have adequate hides and spaces to feel comfortable and run away from another animal that is a bully. A uh, big misconception is that Placos are peaceful and this is not the reality. Placos are not. 
peaceful animals to others of their own kind or any other animal that looks similar to them. So for example, mature males will fight other mature males even if they are from different species. Also, they will try to also breed with other females that are from even different species. A lot of times breeding accidents can happen and males could end up damaging a female, especially if the females are reluctant to breed with the male for whatever reason, whether it's not the right time of the year for them or whether the conditions are not ideal. The male will try to reproduce and end up killing a female untimely. So these are things that can happen. So a lot of research has to go into your purchase before you purchase the animal. If you are going to keep groups, it's better to keep smaller species because then you have a better chance of keeping multiple species, multiple specimens in the same aquarium without too much of an issue as, as long as you have catered to the need for them for their space and different structures and stuff, you can keep a group. Now that is an advantage when you are working with the smaller species, but if you are going to work with the larger species, highly recommend get as large of a tank as you can. Uh, have a backup or two backup tanks where you can have additional fish that overflow, that become a problem or that end up becoming too much bullied in the main tank if you are going to keep a larger group of larger spikers to, to move over to because otherwise there will be points where your two fish will keep fighting and if you don't have a secondary tank set up to move one of the fish, chances are by the morning one of them could be dead. Now this is a big problem and uh, for that purpose also I, I totally recommend if you are going to keep larger species, you can keep them in small groups, yes, but have very large aquariums. If you only have a four foot aquarium, try to keep a species that stays under about six inches uh, for the most part so that you have better chance of uh, success long term. Now these are things that can help you avoid untimely deaths. Another thing is diet. Uh, these animals are quite specialized with their food requirements. So depending on the species that you're going to keep, you need to have to feed them the right type of diet and also the right amounts of food. Now, if you are going to put other types of food into the tank, other fish, the, the fish might still eat them, which might be a problem. So you have to also think what other fish are going to live with this animal and, and have fish that require the same type of diet together. So like even if you're going to have discus, for example, you need to have a fish that can eat high protein diet so that when you feed the discus high protein food, the poikos can also eat that and not have a detrimental effect. You cannot have something like a dissonance long term in a discus tank. Like when I mean long term, I mean like eight, nine years because if you are feeding high protein diet to your discus, chances are most bristlenose will end up dying from the high protein food uh, because they will eventually develop blockages and other types of internal issues for the, the, the diet that they receive, which is improper to them. Now these are things to consider, but also like think having things like wood in your aquarium for not just the wood eating fish, but also some of the other plecos like the bristlenose. They don't actually eat wood, but they do eat ausflat off of the wood. I don't think any pleco actually eats the wood, but they do gnaw on it and then they digest the bacteria that, that grows on the wood. So any wood that's decaying, uh, like my panaculus for example, they go to town on those, so they need that. And uh, you can actually see the animal does much better than the wood in the tank. They come out, they act better, their colors are better, they're healthier, they're, they're looking nice and plump. And, and not uh, anorexic, you know, like when I first got them, they did not put on a lot of weight for the first few months, even though I was feeding them quite a bit of different foods that had like wood chips and uh, alder wood and this and that in it, it just didn't do the same as having actual pieces of driftwood in there that the animal could eat. So these are some things to consider. Now, um, that's one of the reasons why I was reluctant to get panaculus because I didn't want to have to deal with the amount of poop that they create, but now I do love them dearly and uh, I am willing to do that for them because they are gorgeous fish and uh, they do have a special place in my heart. But the point of the video is that if you do not feed them the right diet, they might not make it past the first couple of years. The animals will be fine until it's not. So these are things to consider uh, and also keeping the animals in the right environment, uh, in con environmental conditions like the right temperature, the right TDS of water, right pH and things like that. These things do matter. Now a lot of people might say, oh they can live in many pHs and this and that, you just keep them in the same water. Now uh, the thing is, even for me, I tell people I keep my fish in tap water. That does not mean you can keep your fish in your own specific tap water. 
This is something a lot of people seem to not understand. My water is different from your water. I was talking to a friend yesterday who was sure enough that his water had uh, 50 to 60 ppm uh, of hardness. Now, of course, his placos are going to breed, you know, like really easily in his aquariums compared to somebody that has 700 TDS out of their tank, which is both possible in different places, right? So, depending on the type of water you might have, you might have to do different things to it to get the water to the ideal level for some species. Like, for example, if an animal requires low TDS, low pH water, or like, you know, neutral water, you might not have a lot of success keeping this animal at 8.5 pH, which, you know, is realistically uh, something to consider as well. Now, uh, so, when people say all these things, you have to take it with a grain of salt, even for me, for when I say to you guys, yes, my playcos live and breed in tap water, I'm pretty blessed with the type, type of tap water I have here that it's really conducive to breeding this type of fish. So like, it's quite easy for me to breed them. Uh, same with like all the other fish that I keep. And the reason I keep a lot of these fish is because these are the type of fish that breed easily in my facility in the type of water that I have. I've tried other types of fish. I've tried rainbow fish, didn't really help out too well for me. Uh, I've tried guppies. Guppies do work, but I have to still add a little bit of calcium to some, to some of the species, to some of the strains. Uh, I've tried uh, other types of uh, fish. Barbs really do work, but same kind of water requirements. So barbs, daniels, uh, all types of cyprinids do work in my water, and that's why I keep those types of fish. If you can see right behind me, I have a cyprinid. These are uh, white club you know, so, um, you know, South American dwarf cyprinids work really well for my uh, water. Um, Corridoras do work, but if I want to spawn them, I do have to bring the pH down for a lot of different species. So that's something I have to work on because of the type of water I have and where it is. So these are limitations for each of our waters. So these are things to consider. And uh, if you are going to keep some of these uh, rarer types of uh, placos, you might want to invest into something like an RO unit. If you do have specific types of water, you might want to use some type of resin. If you have a little bit harder water than mine, but not as hard as like four or 500 ppm. But if you have, let's say, 250 ppm of hardness, then you know you might want to invest in some resin. So these are all various things to consider when you are keeping these types of uh, loricariots. Uh, you have to really cater to the animal. It's not some type of animal that you can just put in the tank that will eat the decaying matter out of the tank or keep your tank clean. This is a really big misconception. They're not a cleaner fish. A lot of times, placos create more waste than all the other fish in the tank uh, combined. You might have one playco that still does produce like 10 times as much more waste than your entire other tank stock. So these are things to consider. They're not an animal that is, uh, it's, there's a lot of misconceptions in the hobby about uh, loricariots, unfortunately. And these, these things have led to people expecting these animals to do things that they're not naturally supposed to be doing and uh, when it doesn't work out unfortunately the animal is the one who pays the ultimate price by dying uh, in the improper care so these are this is one of the reasons why i decided to make the video hope it helps some of you guys if you have questions comment below my puppy is messing around in the box so i have to kind of take care of him uh, I will make a part 2 and a part 3 of this video if there is enough requests. So comment and request and let me know and give this video a thumbs up if you like this type of content so I can make more of these type of content for you guys. And uh, as always, thank you so much for love and support. I'll see you in the next video. God bless you all. There you go, there you go. Attack, attack, attack. <laughs> ow, ow. Don't, that hurts. No biting. Fam, fam, listen, you can play, but you can't bite. You gotta learn this, because you're going to a house with kids. He does listen, he's actually pretty good. But then he forgets. <laughs> Pull out attack. Ah, 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 ah! Ah, ah! That hurts, that hurts, don't bite. Don't bite. Understand, listen, listen, you, you can't bite. Okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get upset. Exactly. Good job. No biting.